questions in us. Why do we have to die? Is death not a punishment? And if so, why does Malthus grant some of us a life full of peace and serenity, while others, equally path-abiding people, have to endure suffering? It seems unjust, yes, and I too oftentimes have asked myself how such inequality can persist under Malthus's watchful eyes. Yet the answer is so near, if only we know where to look. For it is not the lack of answers, but the question itself that is the problem. Let me recite to you a passage from the letters of Father Weidenthal. And so the grieving widow said after her companion's death to Malthus, O oh, Lightborn, why must I suffer such woe? Why must I until the end of my path live in grief, while the baker's woman can live happily with her wife? And then a figure made of pure light appeared, so divine and sublime that the widow fell onto her knees, for she realized it was but Malthus himself. Do not grieve for the loss of your man, O lost soul, he said. He was a path-abiding, noble being, and I myself have judged his deeds in his last journey. He is now walking on the eternal path at my side. But despite the musical voice of the light figure, the widow could not find peace. For she remembered all the joy, all the beautiful moments she and her man had been granted together. O oh, Lightborn, I understand that my husband is now at peace. But I shall never see him again, so why do you punish me with such suffering? Have I not, too, always lived a path-abiding life of worship and faith? Then something incredible happened. The light figure knelt right before the woman, and, full of fatherly love, caressed her gray hair. For a brief moment the widow felt all the divine love in her heart. Yes, she felt as if she had realized a greater truth like a man who, for all his life, saw the world through a tainted window and just now realized he only had to open the door to walk outside. Your question speaks of great providence, said the Lightborn, full of compassion and dignity. But tell me, what would make your life worth living were there to be no death? Is it not death itself that gives you the wish to cherish each day? Would you not, should eternal life be granted to you, spend every day in pondering? full of grey thoughts and dullness, for you would know that in a thousand years you shall still be in this very same place. The light figure rose. Only mortality grants a soul the courage to walk the holy path. And like a wound lets a warrior emerge from battle even stronger, your grief shall help you come forth as a wiser woman. And tenderly, it added, this realization was also, O oh child, why I chose to not limit death in its doing, even for my faithful followers, because only a life with an end is a life worthy of living. The woman broke into tears as she realized the wisdom within Malthus's words. Uttering words of gratitude, she lowered her head onto the floor, for the words of the Lightborn had helped her not to see her grief as punishment, but as a trial. And when she looked up again, the Lightborn was gone. Ponder on those words, if sadness troubles your thoughts. Only a life with death is worth living, even if its arbitrariness may seem unjust to you. I wish you all a pleasant night. Walk bless. Walk blessed, my child. How may I help you? <laughs> what it is? Now that's quite the question you're asking there. But fine, why not? The path is two things. For one, it is the name of holy writing that encompasses both the revelation of the Lightborn after the fall of the Eterna King, Azartaron, and the journey of the first vassals to Enderal, who founded this country under Malthus's guidance. It also tells us the virtue of the path, the ideals by which every Endralean should live, which is the only way to salvation. Secondly, it is the holy calling of each Andrelean citizen. Yes, Enderal was, other than countries such as Nerim, Kira, or wherever you come from, an uncharted land. 
It was Malthus himself who showed a young couple, Selna and Ketavon, and their followers the way to Enderal. But it would take far too long to recite that entire tale, and I doubt you have that much time. If you are interested in their journey, I suggest you read The Path. It is good for the soul anyway, even for an outlander. Yes, only a people united in flesh and spirit shall prevail throughout the ages. Verse 39. There's the path of the manufacturers, whose hard work provides for the iron and food of our people. Then there's the path of the erudites, who follow professions that require higher knowledge, such as scribery and alchemy. And then there are the sublime, who were born to lead our country. Within one's path, a person is free to choose. But to cross those borders is almost always blasphemy. There are exceptions in which a soul's destiny unveils only later in its life. For example, there was Laura Mortarblade, who was born to the manufacturer's path, but who became one of the most fabled keepers of Enderal. But they are what they are, exceptions. You are welcome, child. Walk blessed. <laughs>